and elementary school teachers stayed under the Kasali project demonstrate understanding of the concept of inclusive education and implement certain inclusive education strategies. This is particularly demonstrated through sound classroom management skills, which in turn contributed to creating safe, inclusive learning environments and building strong, positive relationships with students. Elementary school teachers appear to be more responsive to the learning needs of children with disability compared to ECCD teachers, displaying varied accommodation and modification strategies during classroom instruction. Next, um, the, this series of findings uh, resulted from the focus group discussions conducted with the teachers. No? So these are the enabling factors that allow them to exercise inclusive strategies in the classrooms. In a nutshell, the ECCD practitioners and also elementary teachers affirm that uh, the following help them improve their classroom instruction. So that includes their capacity to broaden perspectives regarding children's learning needs and abilities, the capacity to come to terms with the idea of disability, embracing the idea of inclusion, the awareness of the teacher to cultivate self-esteem among learners, the disposition to protect learners, and greater confidence in one's capacity, and lastly, acquire greater knowledge on positive classroom practices. So allow me to share a few anecdotes. No? Um, for example, some teachers were saying that through the help of a series of trainings, they have become more aware on what inclusion means uh, that the, for example, this is not something new, this is already something that we have been doing to our classes, for example, classroom management. But what is the added value? The added value is that there are say, certain things that they have been doing, they're not aware that it's a form of discrimination. So for example, um, labeling children or grouping them by ability all the time possibly reinforce that kind of um, social uh, divide within the classroom already. So through the series of uh, trainings that they have received from Kasali, the teachers are now more aware of that kind of action to, not to be done and continued on in their classrooms. Uh, another realization is that um, children with disabilities have a tendency to be bullied, not only by peers themselves, but only by the, them as teachers. In fact, this is backed up by the National Baseline Study of the CWC in 2016 no, that says that children with disability are more prone to experiencing dis discrimination compared to their peers. And so that kind of discrimination and that kind of awareness really help teachers in improving their methodologies, the things that they do inside the classroom. Another finding is this one, no? Well, there are well, there are good things, you no, know, that enable them to really exercise inclusive strategies in the classroom. At the same time, teachers are saying that there are also barriers, and it's also part of the analysis of the team who conducted the study. And what are these barriers? Uh, for example, you no, know, the following eight barriers outlined there, observed from the um, snapshot of schools that uh, the study went to you know, emphasize the teacher's limitation per se. Uh, or rather, it emphasizes not on the teachers themselves, but to the intellectually complex task of teaching. Because teaching entails addressing, effectively coordinating, and aligning a range of elements within the complex microcosm of classrooms. Iba sinasabi nga natin na para siyang microcosm ng society minsan. No? So, this range of elements are part of more complex systems which are associated with what, the how, and the why children learn. So, in particular, uh, while these barriers were uh, identified, the teachers are now requesting or affirming the need for more uh, capacity building activities and opportunities so that their knowledge on IE and how it is practiced in the classrooms can be further <coughs> developed. Overall, no, uh, that is the uh, key message when it comes to the, or key finding when it comes to this particular dimension. Onward to the next dimension towards inclusive uh, culture, uh, it was found out that the parents, the teachers, and the education officials hold a negative perception of children with disabilities and the mixed viewpoint of their educational experiences and pathways. So children with disabilities continue to be concerned they're a curse, no? Or their respective disability regarded as contagious. Such perceptions are deep cultural and are manifested in different ways. 
So this um, phenomenon, it is imperative that this cultural mindset, no, it's not specific to the Philippine context, it's important to overcome this so as to develop robustly uh, inclusive societies which are respectful and celebratory of diversity in all shapes and forms. So the negative perception of children with disabilities may be manifested through acts of social discrimination at the community level. So new parents during the KII and FGTs, uh, they affirm bullying and discrimination experiences in public places. However, interesting to note, no, dun sa mismong study, that while some parents share social discrimination that they experience and observe among their children, they themselves practice it, possibly being not aware of it. So meron doon sa interview, nagsasabi ng mga, ng mga magulang na no, um, minsan gusto ko siya binubuhat yung ano ko kasi hindi halatang meron siyang disability. O kaya yung notion na uh, okay na rin niya na bumapasok siya sa school no, para kahit pa paano nagiging quote-unquote normal siya, normal ang anak niya. Yun. So um, it's very important no, that uh, parents are also made aware of this eventually. Uh, it's also a significant uh, finding within this study. Uh, on the other hand, though, it's also important to highlight that there are parents who indicate more positive attitude towards their children with disability as well as towards the idea of disability. Now, uh, when it comes to the educational experiences of children with disability, it appears that a number of parents prefer their children with disability to be educated through SPED centers where children with disability learn together and not with and through interaction with children without disability. Parents and parents express concern over bullying and possible discrimination experienced by the, the by the children with disability, and also the the capacity basically of the teacher and the school to address the uh, learners' needs. Uh, the, this uh, conversation towards whether to place children in SPED centers or allow them to be mainstream in general uh, education classrooms within the DepEd system. It's something that the parents and DepEd official, uh, DepEd officials ha have to work together. So dialogues, discussions about this uh, have to be open because it is apparent that the readiness of parents and also the readiness of school and DepEd official is something to be discussed about and prepared for. So in the study, it was found out that while the interlinkages um, among the parents, the school, and the barangay officials have started, it's very important to uh, continue and sustain these initial linkages. No? Let me proceed with the next finding, the ne next recommendation on LGUs and schools given the remaining time. So what I would like to highlight in this particular section is that it was found in the study that the uh, sensitization or orientation trainings provided by Kasari help barangay officials in uh, aligning their mandates with the needs of the children with disabilities. Basically, no, um, itong mga barangay officials, sinasabi nila na before sila magkaroon ng training sa Kasari, nagbabudget lang sila batay sa kung ano yung usual na proseso ng pagbabudget. Kung, baga, kung wala silang um, knowledge tungkol sa profile ng constituents nila, ilan ang percentage ng mga may taong with disability doon, hindi sila maglalaan ng porsyento ng budget. Therefore, wala rin uh, programs and possibly localized policy para sa mga persons with disability, hindi lang sila with disability. So, this particular section found out that while there are already budget allocations in place, specifics for those particular communities in, in this study coverage, no, there's a lot more to be done. Kasi in yung budget, as of now, hinahati siya sa ibang sectors and walang um, national law or national prescription or guidelines nagsasabi kung ilang percentage ba dapat o paano dapat i-allocate ang pera at anong programa ang gagawin mo no, para sa persons with disability. So yes, we do have the Magna Carta, but in terms of awareness among stakeholders and duty bearers, this is severely lacking. So uh, at this point, I'll now go on to the recommendations of this particular study. What I like, I like now is uh, the, this particular bullet points. Oops, if you notice, uh, 
um, I presented or uploaded a word cloud though. This is the image that come up after that um, generation of uh, text. Basically, in a word cloud, you upload a set of text and kung ano yung pinaka-common na word, yun yung lalabas doon sa word cloud generation. No? So it appears that the words push, advocacy, including department, continue, and even children are large no, in bold. Ibig sabihin sa set of recommendations, ito yung pinakamarami. Ayan. So now, go on to the specific items no, highlighted by the list of recommendations from this study. First off is to continue advocacy efforts to strengthen legal and political frameworks to ensure compliance with international and national standards. As mentioned uh, earlier by Albert, in the policy mapping that's being done within Save the Children, it appears that there's a need to address the uh, so policy support for children with disabilities, both within the executive level, the depth end, and also within the national level. Because while there is the Marita Carta for the PWD, the implementation is another aspect of it and also the need of specific sector when it comes to education. The second recommendation is to push for interinstitutional planning and collaboration and for multi-stakeholdership collaboration. In a nutshell, this is saying that at the local and national level, mahalagang mahalaga na mag-usap yung mga units, no, yung mga key actors natin sa society. Sinasabi dito na ang pagsuporta, pagkamit ng inclusive education, hindi lang siya nakaatang sa Department of Education. Mahalaga na nag-uusap ang, sa local level, ang barangay, no, nag-uusap ang skwelahan, sinasama ang private sector, ang allied health professionals, no, at ang academe, kasi sa ganitong paraan, makaka-contribute ang bawat isa at ma-achieve yung goals. Yan din yung nangyaring evidence mula sa pinalot na Klasali Disability Inclusive Education Programming at the local level. At the national level, this is pertaining to interagency support no, and collaboration among DepEd, NCDA, DSWD, DOH, and other relevant government agencies. The next is um, to scale up Kasali trainings, specific types of support such as the modules that were developed and also the CBR or the CBID, the community-based inclusive development sites or rehab centers. The community-based rehab centers uh, is similar to a delivery network or a referral system that allow families to really um, go to the unit where, where they need where they are in need of support. So for example, saan sila pupunta kung walang birth certificate? Saan sila pupunta kung meron po lang sa kanila? Uh, kung hindi pa sila nakakapag-assess, no? At kanino magre-refer ang barangay o kaya ang teacher kapag may ganito silang pangangailangan? No? So those are just some of the examples. Next is to strengthen the MME systems when it comes to the disadvantaged sectors. So for the coverage of this study, it refers to children with disability. At the moment, uh, while it is being collected within DepEd, uh, ang nakakapasok lang sa DepEd system ay yung mga batang nag-aaral, but what about children who are out of school happen to have disability as well? And then lastly, uh, we need to push for children becoming uh, becoming active participants and members of governing bodies, no? It's both at the local and national level. So what we're pertaining to here is to increase and improve children's participation with with, the, with and without disabilities to matters that are concern, concerning them. So kumaga, um, it's... Uh, operationalizing the slogan that nothing about us without us. And with that, kasi kanina pa daw tayong self, thank you for listening to our um, short presentation and looking forward to your reactions later. Thank you very much, Cher, for your very insightful presentation. So, uh, our next presenter is um, a consultant of uh, the Northfield Foundation Incorporated Partners for Inclusive Development, and she is helping in their community-based rehabilitation program in several parts of the country. Our uh, speaker is fondly uh, called, or fondly known as Teacher Mai, and uh, she's uh, the former school director of the Center for Autism and Related Disorders in Las Piñas City, and former member of the Educational Committee of Autism Society of the Philippines. And she has more than a decade of teaching persons with autism and helping their families cope with this condition. 
Um, teacher Mai finds fulfillment in her role as facilitator of Siblings Camp Philippines or Sibs Camp, which is a support group activity for siblings of persons with disabilities. And um, this is as a result of her postgraduate research entitled The Concerns of Adult Sibling Siblings of Persons with Autism. Friends, I now give you Miss Rosaline Marie Soromon or Teacher Mai. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I am, my comfort zone is autism, but I think uh, with the uh, need to address more uh, children with developmental disabilities, I am now going into the world of uh, Down syndrome. So funded by Liliani Fans and Paul, uh, Paul Foundation, Morfield embarked on the research entitled A Study on the Situation of Persons with Down Syndrome in Selected Areas in the Philippines which solely focus on knowing the plight of Filipinos with Down syndrome. Based on the themes of Liliani funds for program support to various organizations all over the world, Norfield's goal on ensuring the rights of children and youth with disabilities, and the alarming statistics of Filipinos born with Down syndrome, the study commenced two years ago with the following objectives. Gather information on the current situation of people with Down syndrome, their caregivers, and their families. Gather common perceptions on people with Down syndrome. Identify opportunities and challenges experienced by people with Down syndrome in accessing programs and services. And lastly, identify action plans for Norville and possible partner duty bearers with the responsibility to promote the welfare of people with Down syndrome and help them realize their rights. Local partner organizations of Norfolk in different parts of the country took part in the study with one partner organization that is Kalinga. Uh, having indigenous people joining as participants. The qualitative study. There go. The qualitative study used focus group discussions with the participants and interviews with key informants from both public and private sectors to elicit responses needed in the research. There were 61 caregivers who were mostly full-time mothers and belonging to single income earners who took part in the study as representatives of their children with Down syndrome. Their large families were mostly relying on monthly incomes between 1,000 to 5,000 pesos. A glimpse on the profile of caregivers, children with Down syndrome show that most of them are in their adolescent and adult stages already. Most have not been formally diagnosed and have not been medically assessed for Down syndrome related health and medical issues, nor follow-ups made especially with life-threatening medical conditions. There were 62 children with Down syndrome reported since there was only one, mo there was one mother who had two daughters with this developmental disability. This only shows the importance of having a formal diagnosis to receive proper support in assisting the parents in the event of having another child with Down syndrome. Five rights were considered in the study, but for the purpose of today's discussion, the right to education will only be tackled. Mm -hmm. Almost all of the children with Down syndrome experience attending school in the daycare centers, but as they grew older, only few were placed in the self-contained and general education setting. Currently, with Norfield's home program service, 27% of these children and youth are receiving education in the home setting. As we view the next slide, it shows the range of expenses incurred by the families in sending their children with Down syndrome to school. Let us also keep in mind the monthly income of these families and the dire need, no, the, the immediate need to address several life-threatening medical and health issues of these children. Although there are 41 children and youth with Down syndrome who are in school, 20 have stopped schooling already. It is not enough to say that Norfolk's whole program will be sufficient for these children because it is simply their right to be in school, to learn together and interact with their peers, both typical and atypical, and guided by their teachers in achieving their potentials. 
So what are the reasons for not studying or being not in school? Number one, as we know that Down syndrome, it has um, several comorbidities in um, health and medical issues. So one of the life-threatening uh, conditions is really they have a lot of issues with uh, their, basically their heart. No? They have a lot of congenital, most of them have um, congenital heart uh, diseases or defect. Okay. Another uh, reason also is the inaccessibility of schools because those who took part in the study, most of them are in far-flung areas. So we had one experience wherein we had to move from one barangay to another using the banka or habal-habal. I guess most of us know what Habal Habal is. And the others, we, they're basically up in the mountains. Okay, so it's an issue for them the distance of going to and from their, their school. Okay, for the others, okay, number three, no support system for auxiliary services. Um, since we've seen the uh, monthly income of these families, the mothers are doing their best to help the fathers, who are usually the single income earners to uh, augment the income. So here in the uh, city, no, specifically NCR, most of them are vendors, and in the provinces, they're helping in the rice field, no? mga magsasaka rin sala. And because of that, they'd rather prioritize in, help, in uh, looking work no? for the day para daw may makain ang kanilang pamilya. So for them, bringing to and fro uh, the school, no? from school, the, the picking up from school, rather their children, it's like, um, not exactly waste of time, but it's not really their priority. So perhaps if someone could assist them or help them out, it would be better for them. Another one, which was mentioned by the first uh, presenter or speaker, is the issue of bullying. Okay, because of their, not just of the children with Down syndrome, but even the parents, no? their trauma of uh, uh, of their children being bullied or the children itself uh, being victims, okay, they refuse to go to school anymore. And then the challenging behaviors itself of the children with Down syndrome, okay, um, because of their behavior inside the classroom, their challenging behavior, okay, uh, the parents would rather just pull them out because they feel that the teachers inside the classrooms are not able to manage the challenging behavior, so they feel it's a waste of time that their children are just basically either disturbing or disrupting other classmates or just basically resorting to inappropriate behavior. Communication difficulties, we know that um, quite a number of Down syndrome do have motor problems, and speech or talking requires motor. And because most of them, not because they have not been formally diagnosed er, and as a result, they're not able to receive also proper intervention, their ability to talk is definitely affected. Therefore, they have difficulty expressing themselves and for the others to understand also them. The next is, uh, reason is the uh, availability of physical and human resources. We know that um, in that ad, they have the zero reject policy, but unfortunately, okay, in reality, quite a number of these children have not really experienced school because there are some areas in our country still do not have the physical structure. Okay? They may have the school, but for children with disabilities, they do not have what the so-called classrooms yet. Okay. The others, they already have the classroom, they already have the teachers. Unfortunately, the teachers were honest enough to say that they were not trained to handle such children. Therefore, they are not confident to handle these children. Okay. And the last, no, basically, these children with um, Down syndrome are not totally interested anymore because they feel that, number one, seems like the lessons are redundant. No? Pa ulit ulit lang po. Okay, so some are getting bored already. And the others, they feel like um, it does not exactly address their interest anymore, okay? We ask also the parents about transition programs because some of them claim that they seem, they seem to have um, transition programs in the self-contained settings, but when we ask about them, they themselves could not describe what's it all about. Usually what they would say is, alam namin may gardening, alam namin may baking, but we do not clearly see it in action. Okay, that's the common 
uh, response that we got you know, when we did the focus group, uh, focus group discussion with uh, parents or caregivers. This now uh, leads us to the next finding that there are quite a number of adults already, definitely beyond 18 years old, who are still in the self-contained settings, but they have never received yet any form of vocational program. Therefore, um, when we say opportunities, no, we'd like to highlight also on the good side that we saw. Okay? Uh, opportunities would mean these are positive factors that would hopefully strengthen no, the, the um, efforts of everyone in ensuring that these children will be able to really fully realize their right to education. So two things that we've seen. Okay? Definitely, DepEd has all these policies and guidelines. It's, it's already there, you know, it's, uh, it sets the foundation to whatever actions that are being done or should be done in the future. And the home program option for uh, people with Down syndrome, this, exact, this specifically means um, the teacher or the worker rather, sorry, the worker of Norville goes to the home settings of these children and they teach the children in the home setting, but what we're changing right now is more than teaching the children in the Down syndrome the home setting. They're supposed to teach the parents so that when the worker leaves, okay, at least the, the education will still continue okay, because the, the parent or whoever is overseeing the child in the home setting will still continue, be able to continue um, helping the child with Down syndrome learn. What are the challenges? Okay. We know, again, we have beautiful laws already, but I think what we're trying to see right now here is that um, there should be a, um, I'm sorry, there's a weak, the way we see it is there's a weak monitoring of policy and guidelines, you know, especially when it is uh, brought to the grassroots level, okay, the bottom line, where the actual implementation, the implementation happens. And then another challenge also is the uh, prolonged stay of the adults in the self-contained setting, knowing that they're already adults, so that's 18 above already. And then there is still that unsettled issue of lack of confidence of teachers in handling and managing or teaching children with Down syndrome. Okay. There's the issue of bullying that still needs to be addressed. Okay. And then the distance of um, the, the school setting and then the issue, if not the distance, is the issue of basically helping the parents bring their children to school and picking them up, no? knowing that, again, the, the parents are working on uh, um, finding means and ways on how the family can survive on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, of course, the unavoidable school expenses. Okay. The unclear transition programs no, in uh, self-contained settings, meaning transition programs, we're not just talking of work per se, but let's say um, from the self-contained going to the mainstream or general education setting, from the general education setting, or going to the high school if ever, or vocational, and for the others, we never know, we don't want to undermine their potential. Some might even reach college. No? So these are things that need to be um, clearly spelled out, no? especially to the teachers and to the families, such as the, specifically the parents, rather. And then um, there's an absence in relation to work skills. No? There's an absence of work skills assessment of young adults with Down syndrome. Therefore, it follows that there's also an absence of work skills training program for young adults with Down syndrome. I'll just keep this one bit. There we go. Okay, we'll go now to the uh, issues and recommendations. So what we did boy, in the study, we uh, put together common issues and we came up with a bigger um, of this bigger uh, description of, of those so-called uh, small issues. Okay? So one common critical issue is the weak monitoring and evaluation of policies and laws and of educational programs. So it is highly recommended that there should be a review of this. There should be a regular monitoring and evaluation system of the program. There should be parent empowerment to access rights of child regarding quality education because most of the parents, since they are not exactly empowered, they really depend on 
NGOs, no, such as Norfield, to be the voice. But I think it's different. We believe it's different if the parents they themselves would really um, express no? the, the, the concerns that they have in relation to their children with Down syndrome. Ideally, enrollment for alternative learning system, and of course, under enrollment to the home program. And um, apart from the civil society organizations, the government, foreign government agencies have been now uh, also uh, placed there not to uh, seek also assistance. So special mention to that ed and the local government units. Number two, the lack of readiness among teachers. So ideally, this should be uh, addressed by capacity building. Okay? In order for them to feel um, the fact that they will be having skills, proper knowledge and skills, hopefully this will contribute to their attitude of having a good good uh, um, confidence or rather a, a uh, good self-confidence in teaching and managing children with Down syndrome. And then the absence of auxiliary services, hopefully there will be a auxiliary services created specifically for transportation, school needs, and other related school expenses. And then with the disinterest in going to school due to social exclusion, um, there's a recommendation to come up with a policy on making orientations on disability a school-wide as a mandatory activity at the beginning of the school year. So hopefully there should be like an orientation on, on the different disabilities so that it's not only the teachers that will be empowered, but also the peers, the classmates, and even the other parents of typical students. For work and employment, just like we've mentioned, I've shown a few um, uh, slides ago, okay, um, quite a number of them are already adults. Okay. There should, um, one of the issues again in relation to these adults with Down syndrome is there's an absence of guidance and requirements in relation to work and employment. So again, there should be a review of regular monitoring and evalu evalu sorry, evaluation systems of vocational training and transition programs in public schools. Ideally, there should be um, a development of transition program to work and employment. But what's crucial, I think, for this uh, for this uh, particular issue, it should really start with the assessment of work skills. And then there's also a uh, recommendation to conduct another study on the work and employment of persons with Down syndrome. So at this point in time, um, aside from that, and the Department of Labor and Employment, PESTA and LGUs are also uh, mentioned in this uh, area. Um, Cross-cutting issues for all rights. So this is not only for the right to education, but the all for, uh, for other rights. We uh, realized that there's an absence of local parent support groups and the lack of knowledge and understanding by the public on Down syndrome. So this is basically addressed by capacitating everyone so that we will fully understand what Down syndrome is and we will really know on how to help this people, you know, our fellow countrymen with Down syndrome and their families. And with that, I end by saying the key in realizing their rights of these people with Down syndrome is really the collaboration and teamwork of everyone. So it's about the key players, duty bearers, the civil, uh, civil society organizations, families, and most of all, the people with Down syndrome. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Rosalie, teacher mine. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So our uh, mm -hmm. two presenters have uh, given us uh, comprehensive, detailed information on the realities being faced by uh, persons with disabilities and uh, for instance, our last presenter um, gave us uh, insights into the experiences of uh, persons with Down syndrome, experiences that, that they face, and also experience being faced, realities being faced by their families. So we, what we did for our uh, uh, forum is also to invite some people to give their reactions and to give their insights as well. And for our first um, reactor, I'd like to call on Ms. Uh, Mayumi Fernandez-Gonzalez, 
who is an education specialist of the uh, Philippine Association for Citizens with Developmental Learning Disabilities Incorporated. Our uh, reactor also um, worked at the, the Asia Foundation as inclusive education um, consultant and um, also had engagements with um, other institutions such as uh, the ABBA Institute and also she also uh, had the opportunity of working as a SPED resource person for the Department of Education and as uh, uh, part of the faculty of uh, the La Salle uh, University and, uh, and other agencies. Friends, I now give you Ms. Mayumi Fernandez Gonzalez. All right, good morning. Uh, please excuse my voice. I had a concert last night, so it's a little bit husky. All right, so for the first, um, for the first presenter, which is, I think, is based on the research of Save the Children, um, one thing that I appreciate the most is the inclusive culture, because I believe that um, Putting the uh, putting it into consideration the inclusive culture in our country is an important milestone to reach what kind of objectives that we would want towards this because most of us we are depending the definition of of inclusion or the the culture of inclusion based on other countries standards so that's one another is that. Um, it is a, there's a big possibility that the study to be extended into the levels of the grassroots because I noticed I noticed that the the areas that are chosen are in the metro, so it would be a very good experience to also extend to the remote areas in the Philippines. Um, next is that um, I agree with them that these um, frequent monitoring and strong mentorship program is essential to this. We have a lot of very good laws. We have a lot of very good programs. However, the problem goes through is that who is checking if we are doing the right thing? Okay, and as well as um, for the teachers, uh, based on my interactions with a lot of, of teachers, in fact, I just made one recently, um, one thing that they wanted is somebody will affirm of their decision making process because these teachers they do the IEP they they try they have a lot of bank of uh, strategies and uh, lessons however who who would tell them if it's correct or not so the basis of check and balance is still absent in in the, these um, systems okay so. Um, for the second research, okay, so I appreciate that there's a lot of different areas that they target, which I think is also very important because it makes us look into a bigger picture, okay, not only the metro. Now, um, another is that I would like to ask of maybe a, a, uh, another extension of the study maybe would be the opportunities for inclusive education of this uh, children with uh, Down syndrome. And uh, it would also be interesting to gather the same information on other disabilities. Okay. And um, lastly is that um, I am a believer that the parents are the, the basic unit of our society. And if they are not well informed, and if they are not well trained, then the, the future of the child um, may not be so good because they are the decision makers. They are not the teachers. They are.